Is that Andos? Ma, as I've seen as a key pro, then, then, in your mind, you can voice, ne? No, you can't in your mind, you can voice, ne? In your mind, you can voice. Well, yeah. Hey, Jairi, um, hey, Frodo, click on the entire screen to record the entire screen. Yeah, let's come on, let me do it. Yes, I'm scrolling. Yeah, I'm going to go to the the Het is nog een het Ja. Ik nog net ze voor me niet te Okay, you guys, I think we're going to start now. Um, okay, I will be doing the research process with you guys, but before we start, we're just going to sort out a bit of administrative issues. Christelle's just going to help me. It's about the topics for your um, project, so we just want to sort that out. Is all the groups, are they fine now? Is everyone in a group? Do you know who your group members are? No. Okay, but you need to get all of these guys because otherwise 
some of you are going to do all the work and the other one is just going to ride with. Yeah. If you're struggling with just saying, um, sorry, what was your name? Or saying to him, um, he's struggling, they're struggling to get hold of one of their group members as well. We might have contact details for them, like um, self mm -hmm. members. So if you're struggling to get hold of um, group members and you don't know where they are and they're missing in action or whatever, not answering the emails, just make a point of coming to us and we can give the number to you and see if you can find them that way. Okay, because we, we can't struggle the entire um, semester to find these people. Okay. So now some of the groups already chose their topics, but we want to sort it out now. Everyone should choose their topic now. So Crystal has a list here. Um, I think topic... Two and seven is already chosen, so if one of the members could just come forward okay. and choose the just topics. Just before you guys, I just want to know uh, who, I know there's three groups, you guys emailed me with your topic. Did you get access to the Google Docs document? Okay. Okay, so the idea was actually for you guys to put it on there, to go and write your, your topic on there, because there you can see what has been chosen. So if the one that you want to, be, uh, want to do is chosen, you can then go and <coughs> Okay, but let's quickly go through the groups. Group one, I have your topic. Where does no one of us... Oh, you no. guys are here. Yeah. Okay. Um, group two. Why haven't you seen the topic? I don't know, but I saw... Is there any of you that I already know group. which topic you would like? Okay. So which one did group one? Well, who, what group are you? What group? Eight. 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 Oh. <laughs> okay, which and which one's it taken? Group eight, eight. Okay. <laughs> group nine? Three. Number two, so Rem can have number four. Three. 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 Sorry, we have the list. I don't know which group is the group list. No, she doesn't know which group list. Group list. Oh, what's your name? Topic number three. Can we do group two? Can we have number three? Yeah. So you're in group five. Where? Okay, group two, you're taking four. Where's all the other groups? I don't know if you know. I don't know them. Clamor. It's not there. Let's come so we can find this group. Okay, thank you. See? Is it just Wait, which one is it? So I'm trying to look at my group. Just, oh, okay. This is, is it group six? Yes. Okay. You seem to have selected uh, top number five. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Snare both mice. Okay, no, no. Everybody can sit, please. I don't know. Do you know that one? No. I don't know. None of them. I don't know them. Can I just write Um... <laughs> Just have but a I think then you must choose Guys and girls, quickly listen. Um, the topics are only going to be in the presentation. So, so I don't know how just one get topic the presentation. Left. No, no, no. Is it It's eight topics. Okay. Okay, then um, someone else wanted to ask something? <coughs> no. I said, go sit. No, I don't know what you're choosing. At the back. Yes. Um, wow, what is the one of the... Okay, you can, maybe you can wait then. Let me just, let me just get there. Yeah. Then I'm just going to make um, a note. Okay. Any other topics that we need to write This is your student number, right? And it's also your user in the university email. Where's group seven? Okay. I'll make a note and then Are I will send you the contact details for, for your group members. All right. <coughs> Group three. Yeah, I think we had okay. yeah this one right here. Someone else took our topic. So unfortunately, we had opted for two, but it seems like it's taken. Yeah. Are you also in group yeah, yeah. three? Yeah. All right. But you were thinking we can take number six. Have you just taken that list of Crystal? I think it is fine. I too have it taken. Five or six. Yeah, it's down. What topics is there? Eight or five. Eight and three. Six or five. Six is fine. 
Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Okay. 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 Let me So you guys will have. <coughs> we will give them a topic. Okay, you guys will have the last one. Uh, it's the it's the ninth topic, which is not on the presentation, so you want to not sit there. Um, because we have eight groups and eight eight topics, and then we have the nine. So, um, so you are doing promotion of good cropping techniques to mitigate the impact of natural hazards, and you're looking at the country specific. Not the not all three countries, but one specific. And who's that? It's group number six. Six. Yeah, it's those nice two. Group two as well. No way. No, you mean seven. And that I understand. Okay, never mind. Thank <laughs> you. 
They choose their own country. Yes. With guidance of the supervisor, <laughs> like say. So. Okay. So you guys will be doing. Are we limited to any specific country? Yes. Yes. Malawi, Mozambique, yeah. and Madagascar. So that's exactly Okay. So everybody has a topic now. Everybody has. But choose wisely if you're going to choose a country because they they're very different from each other. Um, yeah, only only when you start to do the research projects or specific courses. Yeah, but if you are trying to pick a country, just speak to some of us because, like for instance, and I'm going to say this now: no no topic is is easier than the other one. Um, for the simple fact that, for example, for some countries, in some topics, there's limited information. Okay. So, for example, in the association topic, um, with the Farmers Association, um, there's very limited information from us. Okay. So, that will make it difficult for you guys to do your research. Okay. The data is there. It's fine. It's the, it's the reading up and the literature review and those type of things that you'll have to so when you're picking a country, just maybe speak to some of us, we'll direct you to the person that's doing that study. So they can tell you. No, rather go for it. Because it doesn't matter which country you pick. The data is there. We just want you guys to not have a stone wall when you're trying to do trying to do your literature. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. We will put the full list on, um, I think, or it can be on Google Drive for you as well. Topic number nine would be you know, the promotion of food cropping techniques to mitigate the impact of natural hazards um, for a specific country. Okay, so is everyone fine now? Okay. okay, I'm going to move on. So I'm going to do study unit two, it's a research process. Now, what we're going to discuss is what is the research process, approaches to research, and then the research process. Okay, and then I'm just going to tell you for ne your next class what you need to bring with. Um, all right, so I'm not going, like in the research process, I'm not going to go into too much depth because the clauses after this is going to be in very much detail in each step of the research process. So I'm just going to basically give you an idea of what you can expect in each step. Okay, that's done. Okay, so the research process. Um, Christelle talked about in, I think, the first or second session a lot about knowledge and to get no, more knowledge about the topic and everything. But science is a method of inquiry. Now, science is basically research. It's a way of learning and knowing the things about the world around us. So when you do research, then your main idea is you want to gain knowledge about something. You want to explore something. You want to acquire more facts or information about something. But to get to that, you need to follow a systematic process. Now, they call it a scientific inquiry process. And you need to follow this process to make your discoveries of whatever topic you choose. And research, to get to this process, we want to solve a problem. So it's not like you want to do research about trees. So what about trees? You want to solve a problem about it. 
and that is what the research process is. Now, the research process is, this is basically just five very short steps that I've identified, and they have principles that link to it. Now, in the research pr process, you first identify the problem. Now, your grassroots books, they, they use the example of the, uh, the, what do you call it, Eidfinsel, uh, discovery of fire, when people first discover fire. Now, I don't feel it's a very good example, so I'm going to use the, the, um, the bicycle example. Now, there was this guy, and he decided, how can he get faster from point A to B? So he identified the problem. He wants to get faster from point A to B, but he doesn't know how. Now, he discovered that this is a wheel, and he puts a seat on it, because they started only with, um, with one wheel. So he put a seat on it and paddles, and now he discovered, well, if I push down on the paddle, I'm going to go forward. So I'm going to go to my place faster. So he recognized the data relating to the problem. So he already ended with the conclusion by identifying the problem. And it is logically and it's orderly, and it is facts that he observed. If he puts this and he presses it, then it's going to go forward. Um, then after that, he made a rationalization or a guess. Now this is called our hypothesis. He guessed that if he... If he's going to do this, he is going to get there faster. But it's not necessarily going to be that. It's just a guess that he made. Now, he's in his research, and while he's building the bicycle, his facts are being determined. So he confirms his hypothesis. Is he going to reach his point faster when he gets there? And that is what the research process is all about. Now you come to your conclusion. Now you confirm or you reject your hypothesis, and you are solving your problem. So this is basically what the research process is about in very short. Okay, and the, so they also talk about PRODEC. PRODEC is just a short way of reminding it. It's a, PRO stands for the research problem, D is the research design, E is empirical evidence, and C is your conclusion. This is also another way just of logically understanding it. But now, they say that research is not always a spiral. Now, the way that the reason why they say it, it's a dynamic process. It's not when you're doing research, it's not necessarily going to be you start with your research, you end with your research. It's not going to be like that. Research, research begets more research. It's like a, the roots of a tree. When I'm doing my research, I'm going to do my research, and then after that, I'm going to think, well, what about this? and then it starts a new research process. But I'm not necessarily going to see that. If I'm doing my research, then maybe one of you are reading my work and you're going like, well, what about this? And then you start from my research, you're going to research. So that's why they say it's not always a spiral. It's just like this growing network of research and where you gain more knowledge. Okay, the approaches to research. This they actually talk about the two approaches, quantitative and qualitative, but there's actually, actually three. It's also the mixed method approach. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about what the quantitative and qualitative approach is, because we're going to do it in our methodo methodology um, session. But I'm just going to just illustrate the differences between the two. So for a quantitative approach, this is normally the one that none of us like, because it's a lot of maths and so on. I, I hate it. Um, but the quantitative approach answers questions about relationship amongst uh, measured variables. So you want to measure something against something. Um, but in the qualitative approach, you, it's usually more complex than a quantitative approach because you want to understand the problem. You don't only want to see the facts. You want to see, from a participant's point of view, what do they think. So it's a lot more complex. Um, for a quantitative approach, you use structured guidelines. Well, basically for both you do. But um, from the quantitative approach, you usually get, you start with your research, you do like um, experiments, and then you get to your conclusion. 
But with the qualitative, you start with a hypothesis. It's more realistic. And you focus specifically on your design, your data collection, um, your interpretation of the data. That's why they say it is more, it's a more complex problem. Um, then, uh, in a quantitative approach, it's usually, it's usually very large samples of data, like for the FIO. I mean, for our quantitative, I don't know how many inter interviews did they have, but for the focus group on the qualitative side, there's much less. You don't have so many people that you can interview. It's like focus groups of six, and you maybe have ten groups where you have quantitative data and you have 2,000 samples of it. So um, that is, uh, yes, and that is why the sample's different. Um, with quantitative approach, you do deductive reasoning. You start with the, the big picture. Like, for instance, if you want to see what the impact is on climate change in the northwest, you start there. Then you go down to specific. You go to the impact on Porchestrum. Then maybe to a specific community in Porchestrum. So that's how it filters down. But in a qualitative approach, you start with Porchestrum or the community in Porchestrum, and then you go to the bigger picture. You, you see now this is the impact, and you um, compare it with the bigger picture, like with the Northwest. Um, yeah, so, and already said, the quantitative approach, you usually end with a hypothesis. You're going to confirm it, you disconfirm it. But with the qualitative approach, and I think this is a very important point, is that researchers focus on, the learn on learning the meaning that participants hold about the problem, not the meaning that researchers bring to the research. And that is the main thing. This qualitative approach is about the people, and you want to find out what their view of the problem is. With a mixed method approach, this is the mixture of both of them, like with the FAO. The FAO project, we use mixed method approach. Now, some people don't like it. They rather stay with the qualitative because they feel it's much more, you can get much more information from it. And others feel that quantitative, those numbers, and they say, that's it, it says everything to you. But the, the two actually complement each other, and you guys are going to see it when you do the project. You can't just use the one. Or well, sometimes this, the quantitative doesn't tell you anything. So, but there is something you can take from that so that they can complement each other. Um, the analysis of a mixed method process is much more complex um, because it's going to be an integration of both of them, um, and it's just to be, get more in-depth understanding. It's not just to get the, the people's point of view. You gain some other data as well that you can use. Okay, the research process. Now, I know some of you have already done um, research and you are aware of the research process. But there are some of you that don't know the steps in the research process. Now, there is a like a beginning and an end to the research process, but um, like for instance, in my master's I didn't have a hypothesis. But when you do that, you should explain why you don't predict that. If you're going to leave out a step, you must always justify why you're leaving it out. Does it have an impact on your study? So you, you may leave out a step, but it's not usually like you, you can skip the, skip the data analysis, not like that type of step. Okay, now there's five phases in the research process, and I think it's 13 or 12 steps. Now the first phase is the selection of a researchable topic. The step that they link with it is to identify a researchable question or a problem. Now this is a very important step. Because if you go wrong here, then it has an impact on the rest of your study. Um, it's not something that you can just think, mm, okay, I will do this. It must be really, it's a really, really thing that you must think about before you um, go on with it. And even when you think about a topic, you must think, well, if this is my topic, then what methods am I going to use? Uh, is it going to be a qualitative approach? Is it going to be a quantitative approach? 
you must think that before you formulate your topic. Because that, that, is, that plays a very big role in identifying your topic. And, oh yes, and also the thing is, you can't just think, well, I will do about this. You must do research before your research. You must think, well, let's do research about it and see, is there any other research out there already done on this topic? Because otherwise, so what, why are you doing the research then? You must bring new knowledge to the table, otherwise it's just for nothing. So that is the other thing you must think about as well. The second phase is formal formulations. Um, to access the step, second step is to access the suitability of your research approach. That is now where you should determine your research approach. You must say, are you going to use, um, are you going to use a qualitative design? Are you going to use a quantitative design? Are you going to do experiments or are you going to give out a survey? That is where you must think about that. Um, the third step is to formulate the problem, question, hypothesis, goal and objectives. Now, that is where you guys are going to be next week. You're already going to identify the problem with your topic. You're going to um, create your, your, your research questions already created through your topics that we gave you. You must formulate a hypothesis. What is your goals that you want to reach out of the study? What is the objectives that you want to reach out of the study? So that, that must be very clearly formulated because in the next step, you're going to draft your proposal. And that is where you are going to be at the end of the semester. So all of the steps from one to three is going to be in your research proposal. And it's very important that the research proposal is very clearly that written because that forms the basis of your study. If that is wrong, then the rest of the study should or, or will also be wrong. But if you, if you say that you're going to do quantitative, then your rest of your study and your methodology chapter should also say you're going to do a quantitative. You can't say in your proposal you're going to do a survey but, or a semi-structured survey, but in your um, in your rest of your chapters, you're, going, you're saying that um, I'm going to do focus group interviews. So this really is important to form your basis correctly. And then also, I'm not going to talk about the ethical implications because Christelle already discussed that with you. If you know that you are going to do a study, for example, on girls in Ikaheng, then you should know it has ethical implications and you need to follow the university steps. Okay, the third phase is your planning phase. Now here, here is where everything comes in. The, the sixth step is your in-depth liter literature review. Now here you are going to read more about your topic. You're going to compare other studies that is also out there so that you can um, gain the best knowledge for your study. And then also you must bring in your literature review, it must look at your, all of your other chapters. That is where you're going to make your linkages with the methodology and the literature. It must speak to each other the whole time. Um, the seventh step is to select your research design or strategy. Now, in your proposal, you may have, you may have already said, okay, I'm going to do quantitative or qualitative. Now, this step is where you're going to say, I'm going to do quantitative, but I'm going to do experiments or pills, whatever. This is usually the guys from um, pharmacy and so on that use experimental stuff. People from a social science background are usually going to do something more qualitative. Um, and it's going to be something with surveys or questionnaires or something like that. But in your proposal, you only mention, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. In this step, you're going to go into detail. What does, what does this um, approach involve? What impact does it have on your study? How are you going to go about it? Everything must be it's must much, much more detail in this. In step eight, you select, you select the methods of data collection and analysis. Again, this is the qualitative and the quantitative. It must be very, very specific, very much broader than your proposal. And then you must also be specific in the way that you say 
I'm going to do it on this um, from 12 to 18 year old girls in this area in this province in South Africa because not necessarily the guys in Portugal is going to read your your research is maybe a guy from overseas and he doesn't know where Ibrahim, for instance, is. So you must be very specific with that. Um, you must also say, I'm going to interview 10 focus groups with six girls each. They are going to be this, um, they, uh, they are, so, uh, I don't want to say now. Okay, but say for instance, they are 12 to 15. The next sample will be another group another focus group of six girls, mm -hmm. um, also 10 groups, but they are going to be 18, so you can compare the differences. What differences do you want to see? You must be very, very specific with this step. The fourth phase is implementation. Now, they say step, step 10 is conduct a pilot study, and step 11 is conduct your main research. Now, for a quantitative study, you can actually run a pilot study you, because you have so much data. Like, I, I think for our FIO project, we had 100 to 300, 300 um, surveys that we gave out. That was our pilot study. Now you must just think how many surveys that we have for our final study. But for a qualitative approach, you won't necessarily have a pilot study because you have so, so um, small sample. Like for my master study, I only had uh, 16 people to interview. That is the only availability that I had. And I couldn't run a pilot study on only 16 people because it was my main research. So what you do in a qualitative research is you test your questionnaire. So what I did is I took one of my fellow students, I took the statistical department, my study leader. You just choose five to six people just to test your questionnaire. Because if you are asking a question, you think, well, yeah, that's a good question. But it's not necessarily going to give you the answer you are looking for. And that should be tested. And that's why the statistical department comes in very handy, because they can tell me beforehand, listen, you're not going to get that information. You should reformulate your question like this. So that is the difference between the two. And after that, you can implement your uh, main research. But in your in your main research, you must say, I've done a pilot study, or I couldn't have done a pilot study because this and this and this. Um, even if you wanted to do a pilot study and you couldn't do 300 surveys, you could only do 100, but it was your plan to do 300, then you must say, what hindered you to do 300? Couldn't you get to the place? Was there a cyclone in Malawi or something like that? You must be very specific. The last phase is phase five. Now, this is your data analysis, your interpretation and presentation. Um, this is where actually where we at the center are now. Our data is already processed um, through, through uh, server analytics um, and the statistical department. They process the data already for us. But now we are sitting with this huge sum of data and we must analyze it now. Um, through, this um, through the data analysis now, you can also interpret your results. And through the interpretation, you must link back to your literature study, because that is where you're going to get your linkages. Because otherwise, the data is saying something, and the literature really is saying something else. It must be an integrated whole, the whole process. And then at the end of, end of the year, you're going to be at step 13. You're going to write your report. And all of the steps that I've mentioned now is going to be in this report. And it's going to be in much more detail than your proposal. It's going to be much bigger than your proposal. Like, I think your proposal is, how many pages is the proposal? No, 10 pages. And I mean, at the end of the day, we're looking at, I think, 50 pages for your final report. So you can see it's, it's much bigger. You can't just write two pages of literature review, and one page of data analysis, which is much more in there. Yeah, and I think that's my story for today. I think I was very quick. Um, but in next week's session, it's going to be much more detailed. That's why I didn't want to 
mention all the steps now because we're going to focus on that next week. What I want you to do for next week, you all have your topics now. You can do this individually. You don't need to come together in your groups. Just read up on your, on your um, topic. I, I want to avoid the situation where we get to the end of the semester and you haven't started with your proposal yet because that might happen. Don't wait for us to tell you, listen, you do your literature review. You must do it on your own. It's independent research. And um, so, yeah, gather some information. Start to look at the steps that I've just mentioned. Just think about it. Think about how you want to go about with the study. Um, because next week I'm going to do the introduction and the problem statement with you guys. Also the central theoretical statement and the hypothesis. Um, at the back of your study guides, there's a guide for um, the preparation of a research proposal. I think you guys should just go through that, think about it, and next week when we get here, um, after the theory, I think we should divide in our groups, we should start working on the problem statement, is that all this now? And just start working in our groups so that I'm here and if you have any questions, we can work on it in class because you guys don't, don't always see each other with some of you are off campus. All right, so that's it. Yeah. Okay, now, but it's fine. It's not going to, it's going, not going to form part of a participation model or anything. It's just to assist you guys because maybe you're in a group but um, three of the other members are off campus so you don't get to see each other all the time. So I'm just going to be here to assist everyone and so on. But we're also going to have the workshop. You can also bring your stuff there as well. Okay, maybe just make it, um, Suggestion. Suggestion. Um, for the groups. Um, you all have been working on uh, Google Docs now. Well, you should have been. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion would be that you that you open a document for your research proposal or review. So then, when we are in class, <coughs> only one per group. Okay. No, only one per group. Yes, only one no. document per group. Please. Just one document that you share with all of your group members and with um, with us lecturers. But you open up a document. You, you do your your discussions and your work on there. And if you do discussions and work in class and you have the, um, 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 the resource to bring your computer to class or whatever, you, can, you guys can write in class as well when we do these discussions. So that we can help you and then from there you can go back onto your Google document. So throughout the process, when we are discussing with all of these things with you guys and we have all of the discussions and things, you're slowly building your proposal. So you don't have to do the entire proposal in one night just before the hand is done. Okay. So base yourself through this and use the situations that we have in class for the group discussions so you can build your proposal throughout. Right. Oh, so and that's it. And also work together because we can see on Google Docs who's working on what. And at the end of the day, we're also going to give you a participation mock for that. So if you don't bring your site, then too bad. Right. But that's it. Do you have any questions? Good. Okay, now you can go to the essays. <laughs>